Hey there, art nerds. Today we are taking a look at some Gensai style watercolors. We are looking at the Boko Undo Shadow May or Shadow Black May palette here. And we are also taking a look at Kuratake's graphite colors. So what we're going to be doing today is we're going to be revisiting the older Boku Undo set that I took a look at years ago, and we're going to compare all three. And we're also going to talk a little bit about the Kuratake Art Nouveau set that I reviewed recently. So if you are interested in kind of misty, shadowy, atmospheric watercolors, and you're interested in Gansai style watercolors, I think today's review will be very interesting for you guys. Hey there, art nerds. So today we have an, a special treat. We're going to talk about the nexus of multiple hyper fixations here on this channel. Today we are talking about both the Boku Undo Japanese color. These are the shadow colors and the Kuratake Gensai Tambi graphite colors. So both of these are Gensai style watercolors. And those of you who have been with me for a long time might remember the original Boku Undo Japanese or Sumi-esque color review. These are beautiful colors. I am going to re-swatch them when I swatch these today. So if you are interested in super granulation, if you are interested in graphite or charcoal additives, if you're interested in moody colors, if you're interested in Gansai style watercolors, you guys are in the right place and I hope you feel like you are in for a treat today. Those of you who have watched my channel for a long time know I have talked about Japanese watercolors quite extensively. Let's do a little trip down memory lane. Look, it's me, my channel, where you're at. So you guys can see, we've talked about the Kisho Gensai watercolors. We've talked about the Kuretake Four Seasons Pastel Palette. We've talked about the Akashia Gensai. We have talked about the Kuretake Gensai travel set. We have talked about the Boku Undo Isumi Gensai unbox and swatch. So this is one of those three palettes, you guys, four years ago. Dang, y'all. We talked about Shin Gensai. I think that is a whole buying product. We have compared Akashia to Kuratake in a head-to-head -head comparison. We have talked about the Kuratake Gensai Tambi quite a bit. We have talked about the Mata... In fact, I have an entire playlist just dedicated to Kuratake's Gensai Tambi. We have also talked quite a bit about... Agami! which is what uh, Gensai style watercolors are typically used for, although they don't have to be used for just this. And you guys might notice the astute viewers here. This is not the Kuratake palette. This is actually the Mazar Como Rebi palette. I just happen to like it a bit better for Edagami, but this is the general use case. I don't always use Gensai for this, and I don't use the Boku Undo Sumi-esque palette for this because with what I would be painting, it would be a bit wasted. I like to use them for little monochromatic illustrations, but you guys can see we have quite a bit of this here on the channel. If you guys are interested in checking out more of it, I will link the playlist for you guys down in the description. I have also talked about the Derwent Tinted Charcoal Paint Pan Set and the Derwent Graphitint Paint Pan Set. Spoiler! I don't like either of these sets. However, other artists seem to. So I was hoping that the Kuratake graphic colors might kind of redeem where these felt short for me. And talking about super granulation, I have reviewed a bunch, so many super granulating watercolors here on the channel. But the ones that I felt were most relevant for today are the Van Gogh Dusk colors. So these are all formulated with 
the main color I thought I had it written on the back. In this instance, it would be Quinn Magenta. And then PBK11, or as Daniel Smith calls it, Lunar Black. For comparison's sake, I'm going to swatch all three of these palettes today, even this one, which has been well loved and has been swatched before, just for comparison's sake. But I'm going to put this one off to the side, and we're going to start by unboxing our Boko Undo colors. And these were purchased a while back from AliExpress. AliExpress no longer carries these, or at least that vendor doesn't. So I have two US-based vendors, including Paper and Ink Arts, who do carry this, and I will link them for you guys down in the, descri the description. Speaking of the description, that is your place to check for links for the show notes for any additional information that doesn't quite make it in the video, as well as loads of information that did. So if you're somebody who prefers to read rather than listen, I got you covered. Check the description below. And if it won't fit in the description, there is always a link for the full show notes. If you're interested in these watercolors, make sure you check the description below. I'll have links where you can buy either set. I ordered the Boku Undo set on AliExpress and I purchased the graphite set from Amazon and I paid $14.50 on Amazon and for the Boku Undo set I paid $28.24 so kind of pricey. For the Kuretake Graphite set you do have more options when it comes to where you purchase it from. For the Boku Undo set, the first set which I reviewed a while back, it's much easier to find that set. It's a little bit harder to find the Shadow May set. So I will, like I said, link it for you guys. Marker Supply and St. Louis Art Supply, I believe both have them. So that might be a good place to check as well as Paper and Ink Arts. And I've purchased from all three of those so I can recommend them and say that they're reputable dealers. did not realize that Kuretake packaging was going to have so much English on it, so I will ring, read that for you guys. One thing I want to point out is that with this already open Boku Undo set, I moved all three sets. This one was at the bottom. It slipped out just like that and hit the floor, and they kind of went everywhere. They didn't break, but you, ah, 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 you guys mostly saw that. Um, you're, if you're going to travel with these, you may want to tape them in or transfer them into a different palette. In fact, if I like all of these colors, I may be making a special like shadow color palette just so that I can kind of move everything from the packaging. But that this is basically the same as this in terms of the packaging. So that's just a heads up that you might want to be aware of. So, oh, bless you, Joseph. So the colors, in these two sets are reddish black, yellowish black, greenish black, bluish black, purplish black, and brownish black. Black. This is the, whew, what a tongue twister. This is the Sumias colors. These are the shadow colors. Shadow pink, shadow yellow, shadow green, shadow blue, shadow purple, and shadow vermilion. Move these to the side. We're working on kind of fine tuning my recording rig. So I have this giant microphone on it that currently is not talking to my camera and it makes my recording arm, it's, it's a little more finicky than it used to be in finding the sweet spot. So if we have some kind of weird camera views, just, just keep that in mind, I'm working on it. I do hope, even though I'm still on my old lavalier mic, I put up some acoustic tiles and I'm really hoping that's helping with the computer sound. So let's take a look at the Kuretake Gensai Tombi graphite colors. Deep, tranquil Gensai Tombi colors with a matte finish and finish specific to graphite. 
So we have some sample art. I wish they would have credited their sample artist. I think I complain about that every time I review a product that doesn't. They're also kind of small, so it's kind of hard to see what you can actually do, but that's just on the packaging. We do have the QR code and we will take a uh, take a look at that in a second. Polishing the surface of graphite gansai once dry reveals a metallic luster. That actually sounds pretty cool. What do they mean by polish? Let's find out. Apply water brush with color to activate it. Gansai pans may exhibit cracking due to extreme dryness. However, it does not affect their quality. Occasionally, Gansai pan texture may look rough due to tiny air bubbles which can occur during production, which does not affect their quality. Please note, not intended for use by children. When in store, keep Gansai pan horizontal with palette facing upwards. So store it like this. Do not leave in direct sunlight or in high temperatures. Do not use for a purpose other than as intended. Wash your brush after use. Make sure palette is dry before storing. And um, for those of you who are not familiar with Gansai style watercolors, these typically use a vegetable resin. So many companies advertise theirs as vegan. I don't happen to know if the pigments used in these are also vegan, but that might be something that's important to you because traditionally Gensai watercolors are made with an animal hide glue. So this is in a plastic storage case. Oh, but I want to take a look at this QR code. We're on the hunt for the QR code. There we go. So open link. And we have their special, this looks familiar, doesn't it? Kind of, sort of familiar because we did this with the Art Nouveau palette as well. Important monochromatic expressions for both drawings and illustrations. Introducing the series of graphite related products, which are now part of the various shades of black amongst Kuratake products. What is graphite? Fluid graphite. Gansai Tombe graphite colors. Question and answer. So they do have a liquid graphite or fluid graphite that is graphite with a synthetic resin it is a thicker ink i wonder if you can erase this that was my big wah about the the derwent ones is you can't erase it and i was really hoping to do washes and then lift them back up since it is in the form of a paste rather than a powder it is easy to mix with other art mediums so Theoretically, you could use this to make your own. You guys can't see me gesture. You could use this to make your own uh, Gensai Tombi. Gensai Tombi. Wow. I'm going to say that wrong every time now. Uh, graphite watercolors. They say polishing it, but, uh, and I guess the one at the top, or I guess the one to the left, since we're viewing this horizontally, is after it's been polished. Gensai Tombi Graphite Colors, Deep Tranquil, girl, Deep Tranquil, <laughs> sorry, girl. Deep Tranquil Gensai Tombi Colors with a matte texture and finish specific to graphite. Polishing the surface of graphite Gensai once dry reveals a metallic luster. Altered to have a deep, calming color that reflects a similar color and texture of graphite, it can be used immediately after diluting it with water. So I guess what they're saying is it's very quick to activate. And I apologize, I'm reading this sideways. What's the difference between fluid graphite and Gensai Tombi graphite colors? Thank you, Kuratake, for answering this because I was wondering the same thing. Since fluid graphite is high viscosity ink, you can adjust the density yourself to express an intentional, uneven texture in your artwork. You can also mix it with other base, water-based paint medium. The compatibility, compatibility varies depending on the products. So be sure to test first on a separate piece before using it in your artwork. Yeah, you should always, that, you should always do that. Gensai Tombi Graphite Colors is developed at the beginning to be an easy to use graphite concentrated watercolor so you can use the paint immediately by mixing in your water to begin painting. So the fluid graphite is not water resistant. You can reactivate it, it, it but it is alcohol resistant. So you could do, I would not recommend using your alcohol markers on it, but you could do alcohol inks on top of it or spray on top of it. So you could ink with it if you want to, but it's not waterproof. So just keep that in mind. I'm such a dork because I think doing the screen capture is, I mean, it's probably annoying for y'all to read like that, but it's fun. It makes it a little bit easier. I do also use OBS on my desktop to capture footage. 
Oh, come. This one is like... All this packaging make, making me have to get an adult. There we go. Come on. All right. Okay, very pretty. Um, You know what I got to do. Okay, so these will just like come out if you are not careful. However, they do have, as we can see, the number and the names on the back. And then over here, they have the number and the names in English if you want to put it back. So I, I love that kind of attention to detail. It saves me a step of having to label it. It does definitely look like it's got graphite in it. And if you watched my Derwent videos, and you should, you ought to find out why I don't like them so we have something to compare it to, you guys will know that I like graphite, but I hate graphite. I don't like any media that gets on my hands anymore because once it's on the hands, it's gonna get all over everything. I have ADHD, I will forget, it will be on my face, it will be in my food, it will be smeared on the next six things I've drawn. So I like water media, because A, because it reminds me to wash my hands, and B, because it's less likely to get on my hands in the first place. So with the Boko Undo set, I wanna see if their pans are labeled or if I'm gonna have to label them. Ooh, ooh, ooh. No, they are absolutely not labeled. So, before we start swatching, I will go ahead and do that just using a piece of scotch tape and a Sharpie to write the names on the back. We're doing this because if you guys can't tell, the mass tone on these things is really dark. It can be really challenging to tell one color from the other until you swatch it. And I don't wanna have to swatch a color every time just to figure out what color it is. So these would typically be used on edigame paper or on rice paper. I don't know where my rice paper is, but I do know where my edigame paper is, but they are like the little cute postcards. So we are going to swatch on that and we're going to swatch on Blick Studio cotton rag watercolor paper, partially because I wanna see all the granulation, I wanna see all the different colors, and a cotton rag paper is really going to invite those elements to come out to play. Okay, so this is what I am starting with for our Etagame postcard paper. And this is basically rice paper, in most instances, rice paper attached to a heavier stock, since rice paper is, you know, pretty dang thin. So I am just going to work my way down the three rows and do little swatches. This is one of those edigame papers that really bleed out with water. The more water, the more it bleeds. Beautiful, a great paper for demonstrating how some of these colors granulate or tie dye out. Totally grabbed it by chance, but it might be fun to do like a moody iris using these paints on this paper. And I am swatching in order of the paint palettes themselves. So we have the original Boko Undo palette that I reviewed for y'all a while back. We have the second, the Shadow May palette, and then we have the Kuratake graphite palette. And you guys can see how similar all three palettes are color-wise. So the first set, J the Japanesque colors, is an old favorite. Some colors have a whole lot of different colors going on. For the Shadow May set, this is like a slightly cleaner or brighter version of the first set. It's a great addition if you want brighter colors or happen to really like the first but wanted more color options. And then for the Kuratake, on this paper, you can't really see the luster of the graphite, but you do get some of the granulation, particularly as it washes out. It is is really pretty and dilute if you're okay with color chromatography. I am if I know to expect it. The palette is similar color wise to the original Boku Undo, but maybe a bit more vibrant.
So far, these are interesting. So this is on our edigame paper, just by Kismet. I happen to grab one that like when you, the more water you add, the more it blooms out like significantly, which was perfect for showing what these watercolors can each do individually. So I felt like on this paper, you can't really see the luster of the graphite. That's fine. You get some really pretty color chromatography and granulation though. The newer Boku Undo is like a slightly cleaner or brighter version of the first. It's a great addition if you want brighter colors or happen to really like the first but wanted more color. And I definitely fell into that category. And then the first is an old favorite. Some colors have a whole lot, like the purple has a whole lot of different colors going on. And that's what draws me to this palette for monotone watercolor illustrations. So let's go grab our Blick paper and see what they can do on a cotton rag. But before I do, obviously these dirty the muddy, dirty the muddy, dirty the water very quickly. So, you know, if you are painting with these, you're going to want to change out your water frequently. And I would treat graphite the same way I treat glitter. These colors are super pretty on a cotton rag. For the ones that granulate, it really encourages granulation and the colors seem more vibrant across all three examples. For Boko Undo set one, I knew the purplish black had good granulation, but I didn't realize the bluish black did as well. For the newer Boko Undo set, these really shine on cotton rag. It's easier to see how vibrant they are. You can really tell that this is a more saturated version of one and that the two palettes are meant to complement each other. Honestly, both of these are also giving me Paul Rubin's Shiyun vibes, but in a good way. As for the Kuratake, the graphite gives almost the same impression as PBK11 in the Van Gogh dust colors, except a little softer and mistier. I like this version of graphite watercolor far better than Derwent's. These offer such interesting granulation that I want to do the same granulating wet into wet test that I do with the super granulating watercolors. And I'm going to do that on our cotton rag paper. Since these three sets have a lot of colors that really granulate out, I wanted to do some wet into wet swatches so we could explore that and get a good idea of what kind of granulation all three sets have to offer. The more water you add, the more these colors shine because a lot of them have some granulation to them that becomes apparent with lots of water. The wet into wet test really reminds me of the Shi Yun and Shi Yun Neo 2.0, which by the way, I reviewed both of those. They're in my super granulation series. I hope you guys will check them out. I'll try to remember to link them in the description. Speaking of the description, check the description because I have written show notes for my friends who would prefer to read their reviews than watch their reviews. So um, I really love, I kind of fell in love with the first Boku Undo palette all over again. Um, they're so misty and so atmospheric and so moody and they're just perfect for like monochrome illustrations. That's what I was using them for. The second set is like that, but even more so. Super duper pretty. I'm a little bit tempted to do some wet into wet field tests with these like I did with the other super granulating watercolors where I do like a 
mini panel of Kara doing a something with this for the background to see how that would work out. I already have a lot on my plate though, so while it's super tempting to do that, I don't know when I'm gonna get around to it. The graphite colors do granulate out quite a bit. The graphite really helps with that granulation, but I kind of am starting to feel like maybe graphite watercolors aren't just the best fit for me. You're supposed to be able to burnish these out to get a luster though, and I'd like to play around with that a little bit more later on. I think doing a wet into wet test, at least like this with these watercolors was a good choice because it really gives these watercolors a chance to open up and kind of granulate. You can really see what some of these colors are capable of, particularly the graphite colors where the graphite almost acts like a dusk color, but it's like a softer sort of dusk color. So next, I want to do a little watercolor bookmark with you guys, really, really simple. I encourage you to paint along with whatever watercolors you have, but this is gonna be a good opportunity for me to kind of play around with these. If you watched my Kuratake Gensai Tambi Art Nouveau set review, I did a bookmark and I did an Edagami postcard. And I thought this would be perfect to do both of those as well. So we're going to do a very simple bookmark using all three sets. Same principle that we used with the Art Nouveau palette, except we're doing triangles. Now, I will say I should have done my triangles bigger. They are very, very small, and I think some of the color gets lost in the sauce here. So if you're painting along with me, regardless of what wet and wet shape you choose to do, do it bigger than I did. So the goal is you hit it all while it's still wet. We're working our way down all three palettes, one palette at a time, and you wanna encourage the colors to mix into each other. So it is almost a shame how much these fade when they dry because when they're wet, they are so pretty, super duper jewel-like. It's understandable that they dry so muted. Sumi and graphite aren't exactly aren't exactly scintillating colors. They do have a pretty sort of pebble look to them though. And I'd love to try this bookmark over again with a larger size or maybe like big hexagons, something like that, so that we have room to actually see the colors, to actually see the granulation. Because at this size and as it stands, everything's so small, it's really hard to see what colors, especially because two of the sets, the first Boko Undo and the Kuratake Graphite are so dark. The only set that really has some bright color to it that can add some visual interest and some contrast is the Boko Undo Shadow May set there in the middle. So I have already reviewed the first Boku Undo set and I wasn't really feeling inspired by the Kuratake set. So I wanted to use the second Boku Undo palette, the Shadow May palette, to paint some Edagame irises. I thought I would share that with you guys. So this is the paper that we did our swatches on earlier on. As I've mentioned in some of my ed other Edagame videos, there are a lot of different Edagame paper types with different 
uh, effects to them. Some of them are more bleedy. Some of them are less bleedy. And you kind of should just play around with them and figure out which ones you like. A while back, I kind of reviewed, mostly for my own reference, a bunch of different ones. And I painted a bunch of different edigame flowers. I will link that playlist for you guys. I would love it if you would paint along with me. I think edigame is a wonderful art form that is designed to make art more approachable and designed to encourage artists to make things and send them to other people, which obviously that's something I love. So I am using Nichiban masking tape and I am applying it to the back. I am going to sketch out some iris, iris shapes. I am so sorry. These are so hard to see. Um, I'm sketching them lightly so that the, the graphite won't be distracting and that I can cover it very easily, but my camera does struggle to pick it up. If you are interested in learning how to draw flowers though, I have two different types, actually multiple different types, but two main different types of how to draw flower tutorials here on the channel. I have my newer how to draw flowers series, which is a series of shorts. They're all under one minute. They are very quick. They are very basic. They walk you through how to draw different flowers step by step. And then I have my longer, more in-depth how to draw flower series that also includes how to paint flowers. Try to remember to link them for you guys down in the description below. I would love it if you would check them out and paint along with me. And if something I do here on the channel inspires you to make something, I would love it if you would tag me at Natto Soup because I would just love to see what you make and it would really mean a lot to me. So I'm starting by blocking in our irises using kind of the purplish color from this set. And I'm leaving the throats of these irises white. And we already have a very limited palette to work with. So I'm going to limit my color usage even more. I don't want it to become too garish. So I am going to just kind of focus on like three, maybe four colors here. I'm going to use the yellowish tone to add the throats as well as the stems on the flowers. And I'm not really trying to control all the bleeding. So with this kind of paper, the more ad water you add, the more it's going to bleed into other areas. If you paint with a thicker mix of paint with less water, it is less likely to move as much. So this paper is far more absorbent than cotton rag or cellulose paper. It does take getting used to, but I love working on these kind of papers. They're so much fun and they're really inspiring. And I think they are well worth checking out. I have applied a background wash of our almost like a tealish green. And then I'm going in and adding some of the leaves of the iris plant sticking up in the background while it's still wet so that it diffuses out and we get that soft, misty, atmospheric kind of look. I'm not really trying to go too much for details. I'm trying to keep things fairly light. And I'm kind of trying to figure out what I want to do with the background first, because that's going to give me a chance to think about what I'm going to do with the irises and just how much this paper will let me do. I'm grabbing a little bit of our pinkish color, mixed it with the purple. And now I'm starting to actually paint the petals of the flowers since they've had a chance to dry a little bit and are less likely to spread as far. A little bit of spread is wonderful. You definitely have a chance to just kind of relax into painting. It doesn't have to be perfect. The whole point of this is to put it in the mail and send it to a somebody. Now, who wouldn't love receiving an original piece of art that you made for them? What a beautiful sentiment that is. So it doesn't have to be perfect. We're not going for perfect here. And I love that about edigame because it makes it a very approachable art form. It's wonderful for beginners, great for children, and great for adults too. You guys can see that I am having a lot of fun with this. I'm doing some blend out techniques, but let's actually talk a little bit more about the palette. This palette really makes me think more Art Nouveau than the Kurotake Gente Tambi Art Nouveau palette that I reviewed recently. I'm intentionally working with a limited palette, shadow purple, shadow blue, shadow pink, shadow yellow, and shadow green. And I'm not trying to work too hard with this piece, letting the paper do a lot of the work. Compared to the Art Nouveau palette, this palette is easier to paint with. It delivers a range of color saturation. I can build up the intensity to create contrast and I can mix colors to achieve intermediate colors. While I originally thought it might 
while I originally thought that maybe Edagame wouldn't be the best fit for me with this little palette, I think it definitely has its place if you approach your illustration with intention. So according to Booken and Pennon, so Book and Pin probably, I'll link the source for you guys down in the description. These are made with a combination of traditional sumi ink and colorful dyes. This unique watercolor paint is perfect for creating deep monotone paintings, sumi and haiga, simple drawings that often accompany haiku poems. Boku Undo is located in Nara, Japan and has supplied artists with high quality sumi and calligraphy supplies for over 200 years. The company has special expertise in sumi ink, a traditional black ink that is expressive with its many subtle shades and that withstands the test of time. Now, are these light fast? I don't know because they are dye based in addition to being sumi ink based. So you guys should let me know if you know. According to Click Kits, they have a professional level pigment load, rewet easily and dry more velvety matte than other... Oh, I apologize. This is actually not a no, it is about the Boku Undo. What am I doing? I distracted myself when I saw the Gensai Tommy. So let me start again. According to Click Kits, they have a professional level pigment load, rewet easily, and dry more velvety matte than other Gensai paints you might have seen in the past. They do not perform the same way as Kurtake Gensai, a modern vegan binder alternative to traditional animal glue, which has a shiny residue when applied thickly. These colors have a low flow disperse rate and can be urged to flow in very wet washes as we're seeing here. Also according to Click Kits, a shadow palette means that the base of the color is black and another color is added to it. The scale of diluting each color will provide a wide range of options which will each maintain a high level of saturation of color. The ink pigment in these paints is not waterproof, of course, so it will flow when rewetted, which is very helpful to know. You probably cannot do glazes on top of this paint since it can reactivate. So you guys can see we we were able to build up so many more layers of color and shadow. We were able to get more nuance out of these paints than I felt like I was able to achieve with the Art Nouveau palette. To be fair, we are working on two different Edagame papers, but I still think the color range is better with this little palette than what I saw with the Art Nouveau palette. So if you're looking for Art Nouveau 1920s and a little bit earlier vibes, this, in my opinion, is a better palette for that with more flexibility than the Kuratake Gensai Tambi Art Nouveau palette. And once our postcard has dried, I am inking it with a Pentel pigment brush. I happen to like the chunkier line weight that this brush can deliver. It can deliver a really expressive line weight with really, really thin lines and really thick lines. And it also delivers some dry brush, which adds some grit and some visual interest and more hand of the artist to make it look like the traditional piece of art that it is. And it's easier than pulling out a brush and an ink pot. I've actually talked about these a lot here on the channel, particularly during the inking month of October. They are definitely a brush that I would recommend if you wanna work with a larger pigment brush.
I mentioned earlier that I wanted to test out the burnishing properties for the Kuratake Graphite watercolors. Now, supposedly you can burnish it using a spoon. So I am taping down a little round of Blick cotton rag watercolor paper. And I'm going to really try to saturate it with graphite because when I was looking at the examples online, it looked like they had really, really saturated the paper with color. I also want to try erasing it because while I did not like the Derwent graphite watercolors, and a lot of people do, it makes me feel like I'm missing something here. One of the reasons I didn't like them is because you can't erase them. And I think an erasable graphite watercolor would be so much fun to play with because then you could pick out your highlights. So I wanted to test out all of the colors in the set. So I'm just doing kind of a little wheel here. And this also gives you guys a chance to see just how much granulation you get with the graphite. So I added a bunch of color and a bunch of water, and then I allowed it to dry overnight. So my Kuratake swatch has had a chance to dry overnight. I'm not entirely sure what they mean by polishing, but I'm gonna try what I think they mean by polishing. I'm also gonna try erasing. This is still on the Blick cotton rag paper. I don't know if they're polishing on a smoother paper. I imagine that would probably work better than trying to work on something that has so much tooth, but since it's a watercolor, I'm probably gonna try it on a watercolor paper. Okay, that didn't do anything. I guess I'm gonna look up what they meant. So the graphic on Amazon shows with a spoon, which I don't know about you guys, not really seeing much difference. And I did try to uh, really lay it on there thickly. So I don't know not working for me, might work for you. It's not necessarily something that I would have been that excited about to begin with. I'll share the graphic with you guys though, so that you have it. Let's try erasing. No. Well, that's disappointing. All this experimentation brings up a few questions for me. I really want to know how they're making these sets. All three sets contain variations on basically the same colors. We've got a red, a yellow, a sap green, a phthalo blue, a diox purple, although this one is less straightforward, and a brown, although the shadow set went with a vermilion. And then why these colors? While it seems like it's a good starting point, if every set is a variation on this, it limits the market. I sort of started to see this with some of the super granulating sets as well, and it gets kind of boring and repetitive after a while. You want to test to find out if they are different, but they, they tend not to be. Let's talk about the pros and cons, starting with the Boku Undo set. So the pros, the colors have a vintage feel without the black additive making them fall apart. Let me go grab my Kuratake Art Nouveau example and I'll show you guys what I mean by that. So this is the bookmark that I made for the Art Nouveau review. And you guys see this here. This was one color, maybe two colors. I think it was the green and I think maybe the sepia that have this like really gritty granule, not sepia. It's uh, it's almost like a burnt, it's like a Indian red kind of color, sorry. Anyway, this one and this one have this black gritty additive and you guys can see as soon as it encounters other colors wet into wet, it pollutes them and it kind of starts to deaden the colors like a lot. I really didn't, don't necessarily enjoy that. And the Boku Undo set, 
is able to have kind of a vintage feel without that black additive really kind of deadening everything. The colors are muted yet still mixable for in between shades like red violet or some of these mid greens. And I'm able to build up saturation. You can start light and go much darker so you get good contrast, which in comparison with the Art Nouveau set, which I feel like in tone, these are very similar to, the Art Nouveau set can't really do that. I'll go get the Etagami for that one and show you guys what I'm talking about. So here is the Etagami illustration for that and um, spent almost the same amount of time on both of these, maybe a little bit longer on this one. I saw that the paints were gonna be more receptive, but I just couldn't build up that mauve color. I just couldn't get it with enough contrast. And you guys can see with this, I could get a good range of contrast and really build that color up. So to me, the Boca Undo palettes as an Art Nouveau inspired palette are a little bit more useful than the Kuratake Art Nouveau palette. So what are the cons? The newer palette, the shadow pink or the shadow colors palette is a bit challenging to find. The first set is generally what pops up when you look this up. They're also pretty similar to the first set. So unless you really love these kind of muted colors, you really don't need both. I do, and I have an art supply addiction. So here we are. What about the Kuratake Graphite? The pros are it's pretty easy to find. I've been seeing it all over the place lately from Amazon to my local brick and mortar. The cons? Color-wise, these are really similar to the Boko Undo Original Sumiesque palette, although that palette looks cleaner. The graphite can kind of read as muddy, and it has some granulation that isn't in the Kuretake graphite set. Now, I couldn't get it to polish, I couldn't get it to erase, and those were the two big selling points for me, and it's one of the reasons I really struggled with the Derwent graphite set that I reviewed a while back, the Graphitint set. So if they won't do it, there isn't really a reason for me to have this set. So it's hard for me to recommend it, especially when I really did like the Boku Undo sets. Now, all the palettes shown today have large pans that allow for bigger brushes. They are quick to activate with lots of color. They seem to be dye-based, at least according to the internet. It can be hard to find official information that reveals pigment and dye info. So if you guys know, let me know. What's my verdict today? Really, we're comparing the Boko Undo Shadow Pink palette against the Kuretake Gansai Tambi Graphite palette. I pulled out the older Boko Undo palette because I really like it and I feel like these well, not these two, but these two go together. And I felt like it would be helpful to re-swatch it and talk about it again for you guys. So really we're talking about these two. So the graphite palette is going to be the easier of the two palettes to find, but it's not the one that I'm going to recommend. I actually like the Boko Undo shadow palette better and I think the colors are prettier. And I mean, to be fair, maybe that's just a matter of taste. Let me move some of this out of the way so you guys can see. So we have here on the swatch sheet, if you guys will remember, it's been a day for me, but it has been hardly any time for y'all. These are the shadow colors, these are the black colors, and then these are the graphite colors. So let me adjust the camera. So the palettes are all pretty similar. I think the shadow colors are the most vibrant and saturated out of the group. And these are meant to be muted colors. So you know, like this is an intentional thing. I like the granulation in the black colors. We've got some really pretty things going on with the blue and with the violet. But this palette here has a little bit more of that oomph and might be able to actually paint something, even though, yes, I've done a lot of really pretty monochromes with this and plan on continuing to do so. This palette kind of stands alone really well as like a moody monochromatic study palette. So it could be great for your watercolor sketchbook. This one could do that and also be good for edigame or good for adding shadow colors to your other Gansai style palettes. The graphite colors just kind of fell flat for me. They feel like a weaker version of the black colors here with the addition of graphite, which kind of muddies and dulls the colors. 
and I couldn't really get the graphite to do the selling point where you can kind of burnish it and it'll get kind of shiny and metallic. It just wasn't working for me. Maybe they're working on a different paper. Um, if it works for you, if that is a part of this that you like, if you use it as part of the line art, that would be really cool. Let me know down in the comments below. But for me, even though this is the easier palette to get a hold of, it's not worth it. And I'm not going to recommend it to you guys today. But your use case and your opinion might differ. I just have two other palettes that I happen to like better. Which of these palettes, if either of them, do you feel is a good fit for you? I ended up really liking the Shadow May palette. It was more of an Art Nouveau style palette than the Kuratake Art Nouveau palette. And I just really enjoyed using it. And I enjoyed the saturation we were able to build up, the color we were able to build up, and just how the paints handled. I was less impressed with the Kuratake Graphite. I just don't seem to have any luck polishing it to get that metallic sheen. And honestly, the colors are just kind of dull and uninspired compared to the Boko Undo palette. So this is the older Boko Undo palette that I reviewed a while back. This is the Shadow May, and then this is the Kuratake Graphite. And for me, it just, there's not really a place for it considering I already have the other two palettes. And then one more time with our granulating swatches, the original Boku Undo palette, the new Boku Undo palette, and then the Kuratake Graphite palette. But you may have a completely different experience than I did. So let me know if you happen to really like the Kuratake Graphite palette and what you plan on using it for. I hope you guys found today's review to be helpful useful and informative, maybe even inspiring since we did do a couple of tutorials in this. And let me know what you'd like to see me review next here on the channel. If you enjoyed hanging out with me today, remember to leave a big old thumbs up, click the subscribe button and hit that bell notification to let YouTube know that you want to see more from me. And I'm looking forward to seeing you guys again really soon with another art supply review or tutorial. I hope you guys have a wonderful day and I hope to see you guys again soon. Bye!